Today I'm going to show you how to wrap some custom form controls in Headless UI's radio group so they work great on any device and you get keyboard shortcuts out of the box. So I've been working on my side project here and I've got this little modal that shows up that lets you add goals and uh, you can choose a goal and then choose how many times per week you want to do it. And uh, every time I work on custom controls like this, you know, I usually start just by adding some buttons. So if we find out where these buttons are, uh, we'll see, I'm just mapping over this array and rendering a button. Now I was redesigning this and uh, you know, this is just kind of the easiest way to do it. No matter how many times I do this, this is usually just how I think to start. And then I realize what we're really dealing with here is radio buttons because you can only choose one of these at a time. So if I was building this with native HTML, I would use input type radio. Um, you can already see actually in the code, if I go up to these toggles where you actually choose whether you're going to track a goal this week, we're using this switch component. And this is also from headless UI. It's a component that acts like a checkbox, but lets us style it in any way we want. We can see here that this doesn't look anything like an HTML checkbox, but it gives us all sorts of benefits and accessibility uh, features for free. And that's exactly what we're going to do right down here where we've created these kind of custom buttons. So if I pop over to the Headless UI docs for Radio Group, they have this cool example here. And uh, again, if you haven't used Headless UI, it's basically providing us with the functionality without any opinions about design. And uh, you're gonna see just how easy it is. We already have our design here. Uh, we're not gonna really have to change much at all. So we start by importing Radio Group from Headless UI React. I'll come up here and grab it right here. And then back down here at our buttons, let's take a look at the example. We basically want to wrap everything in a radio group. So I'll come uh, right where we iterate over each button. And let's just wrap this div right here in a radio group. Now this group needs a, a value prop. And in our case, uh, that's the current time per week, which we can see we're already getting with weekly goal dot total. So we can just pass that in as the current value for this group. And then we have an on change prop, which is used to set that value. Now we can see uh, currently whenever I click one of these buttons and we run this click handler, we're invoking this on total change callback with the number that was clicked. And that on total change is uh, just a prop that I'm getting kind of from the parent right here. But this is kind of within this loop for each number that we're iterating over. We have the number, but out here we don't have the number. Well, uh, this is because this works, again, just like HTML radio inputs, where each option is actually gonna get its own value and they're gonna communicate automatically to the parent which value was selected. So right here, all we actually need to do is just say on total change and a headless UI is gonna take care of passing the correct number for us. So that takes care of the parent group. It's good to add a label here. So let's go ahead and drop this and we'll call this frequency, but we'll add a class name of screen reader only. And if we come back to our app and save, we'll see nothing's changed in our UI. That just hides this for visual users, but it shows it in case there's a screen reader interacting with our page. And then finally, we wanna render an option for each one of our numbers. So I'm gonna come here to my button. Let's go ahead and get rid of type. We also don't need this click handler. This looks like it was left over from some redesigning that I was doing. And we'll change this to radio group dot option. And now the value prop, uh, we want it to be the value for this option. In our case, this is just going to be the number. So this is just a simple way to get an array of numbers one through seven, because that really is the value of each one of these options right here. Okay. If we take a look at our app, it actually looks like everything is working. Our data is updating and uh, let's put running at seven and save and look at that running is set to seven. So that's basically how easy it was. Now check this out. When I click on this, I can use the arrow keys to move left and right. So that's something that's coming for us out of the box uh, with 
headless UIs radio group. We didn't have to implement that at all. Check this out if I kind of uh, inspect this here with the DOM. And let's check out the parent div here for CrossFit up here. We'll see we have an ID headless UI radio group. We get ARIA labeled by headless UI label. And uh, if we check out one of these controls, we're gonna see things like roll radio, ARIA checked is false. And uh, it's basically all this good stuff uh, that's coming for free. We have our label here, which is hidden, but it is available for screen readers. It has an ID that was auto-generated and uh, that's linked to the actual group with ARIA labeled by right here. So all that is handled for us and uh, it just makes this a lot more accessible, works better on iPhones, works better for screen readers. Now, uh, we're not quite done. Uh, when we were just doing this ourselves, I was conditionally rendering this class, uh, whether it was kind of bright or not, based on this logic right here. So I was kind of recalculating whether each option was selected, but uh, Headless UI uses this render props as children to expose contextual information. So you can keep it like this, but if we wanted to, we could pass in children right here as a function and then we could render a span tag here with the number in it. And if we come back, we'll see the same thing. But now we have this argument to our children. Again, this is the render props pattern. And we get contextual information, which uh, we can just bring up with control space and see we get whether it's disabled, whether it's checked, and whether it's active. So I can just use checked right here instead of checking for it myself right here. So uh, let's just comment this out and we'll see our UI kind of breaks. And now we should just be able to throw some class names right here and just say whether we're checked or not. So let me just wrap these classes and let's finesse this a little bit. I think I wanna bring the rounded full class down here, the width and height, and the border. And then I also want to grab these flex to center the number. Now I'm using Tailwind, but of course, uh, these are just class names. You can use anything you want to style these components. Headless UI isn't tied to Tailwind at all. Okay, that looks good for our static classes. I like leaving uh, the focus styles on the actual radio group since that's kind of the element that uh, the browser's designed to receive focus. But now we can do our conditional styling right here where we have our checked Boolean. So uh, we want these classes if we're checked. Otherwise we want these classes. And uh, this is starting to look like it's working again. I also had this transitions colors right here. So that when you click this, you kind of get this little fade and uh, Lastly, let's get rounded full back here for our focus ring. And just one more detail, we can see we're actually transitioning the background color on select, but the focus ring is uh, not transitioning. I think if we were to always render a ring and then always make the offset gray 50 to match the background there, but then by default, make the ring gray 50 as well. So it's hidden until it's focused, in which case we'll make it sky 400. This is kind of how rings work in Tailwind. And then we still see that instant movement. If we look at transition colors, we'll see that it transitions these properties right here, color, background color, and so on. Whereas uh, these ring utilities, they're setting these Tailwind properties, so it's not quite picking it up. I think if we just, use the full transition class, give this a shot. And now that's looking really smooth because the ring uh, is fading in and out exactly the same way as the actual button is. But when we click, since I have this focus visible plugin wired up, we don't get any of the selection. Same with our switch. We can select that, hit space, and uh, everything's working really nice. This is looking really slick. So the, uh, the render props pattern here is really cool because once you give the radio group its value, its on change function, and you give each option a value as well, well now the radio group 
and each option knows whether it's checked or active or disabled. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to reuse these things. You know, if I wanted to reuse this button group UI throughout my app, I could pull it into a button group component with kind of a similar API where it takes this stuff and um, I wouldn't have to basically check whether it's um, each option is active different in each use case. It would just know again, based on the value of the group and the value of each option. So uh, these headless components are just really cool. Again, they work with any way you wanna style your app, um, any sort of CSS library or a CSS and JS library. They actually just added a brand new component. It's a combo box, an autocomplete. And so uh, this thing just keeps getting better and better. And it just takes care of all of that kind of annoying plumbing and stuff you probably don't uh, usually remember to do for you without imposing any sort of styles on your application. So I was pretty happy with how this turned out and uh, wanted to make sure I shared that with you. If you haven't heard of Headless UI, make sure to check it out. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.